welcome back to my garden in today's video we're going to be just tidying up our front flower bed and we're also going to plant up a few containers as well but before we get started i want to show you guys what the beautiful floral arrangements around my front entryway that we planted up a few weeks ago look like because you guys it looks amazing and for me i love tulips before they start to open up i just feel like that is the most prettiest time for the tulips because you know the tulips will start off closed and they'll open up during the day and then during the nighttime they'll start to close again and you guys i just want to show you guys what these look like and then we'll head to the back you guys look at how beautiful everything looks just amazing this beautiful looping all of the containers you guys see the tulips are out now you can see more of the pops of tulips more of the accents now that they're out I'm gonna go in, we're gonna just go ahead and pull these tulips up because as you guys can see, it's definitely not the luxurious show that I'm used to having with my tulips and completely fine, 100% expected. When you find a tulip that you can perennialize in your area, take it and plant it in masses. Sometimes you'll get those tulips that maybe one year or two year, they look like they're doing great, but then after a while, they kind of just fade out. Now, that was part of our situation right here, but let's go ahead and snatch these tulips right out of their place. This is what everything looks like now so what I did was I took all of the pansies from the other area and that way it brought everything back in together so our combination here is the matrix yellow purple wing we have the frizzle sizzle lemon berry and just a plain purple pansy and it's going to be gorgeous once everything fills in Alright, so now that I have those tulips pulled out, I have the pansies planted in, I want to go in and just tidy up this front flower bed real quick, the perennial plants in there, and then we'll go ahead, move to the back, and we'll plant up a couple of urns. So like we went in and we cleaned these coral bells up and we definitely could do a better job with the coral bells but I'm satisfied for right now. I'll come back out and I'll probably just go ahead and continue to get whatever I can get done get done. We also went in and we cut back the creeping fly and I fertilized these earlier when I fertilized my hydrangeas as well. Same thing with this coral bell right here.
getting ready to plant up some beautiful containers. So come on, let me show you what containers we're going to be planting up. So what I want to do now is I want to go ahead and grab the rest of my plants that I'm going to be using over here in this area. all of my plants let's go ahead and plant up this container I want to go over the components that I used in this container. They're very simple, very easy to find. So I started off with a topiary and I like having poodles because it adds structure to the area. And then also it complements the planting in the front so it draws your eye back. It more so invites you into the garden area, into the space to find out what is going on that way your guests know that you have a welcoming place and that you didn't just go hodgepodge and everything will start out so we started out with a evergreen topiary here we have a lobularia then we have another supertunia of verbena and then around the base of it i wanted it to look like a big large bouquet of flowers so i went in with some african daisies or a osteospermum and that completes the look now you guys may be thinking, why am I planting up summer plants in the early spring? Now, you guys, supertunias can take a little bit of cold, and the osteospermum, they really thrive in the springtime. They will go on a little bit of a low during the summertime, and then when the fall comes, they'll just start blooming again. You guys, these are one of my go-to plants. I just love them, and I always feature some type of petunia, whereas, whether it's a Monroe, Via super cow or whether it's a proven winners super tunia so those are a must for me every year in my garden and they really perform if you enjoyed this content if you want to see more content like this go ahead subscribe to the channel I want to get in here and I want to deadhead the old spent hydrangea blooms. Now, we're not pruning anything, and this is very important because this is a big leaf hydrangea or a microfolia hydrangea. If you go in and you prune this back, you're going to lose your blooms for the summertime. Now, real simple, the only thing we're doing is just taking off those dead spent blooms and We'll move on to the next activity after that. this 
this hydrangea bush cut down. It's really giving me hydrangea vibes. Let's get the fountain up and running. It doesn't look too bad, too dirty. But what I'm going to do is I want to start off by scrubbing it up a bit. So the first thing we have to do is make sure that we're protecting our lungs all the time. Now, I'm doing my fountain on the fly, but if I was not doing my fountain on the fly, I would come in and I would add a bit of bleach in order to start to disinfect the water. You can really get sick by messing with water that's been stagnant and everything like that. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and just put my mask on real quick, my PPE, and that way I make sure I'm protecting my lungs. guys i'm so excited my fountain is going now i'm back in a place where everything just feels very serene very peaceful now as i keep saying i am just now in a place where i'm getting warmed up you guys we're just now getting started if you're not subscribed to the channel what are you waiting for click that subscription button i would love to have you join us thank you guys for watching Thank you guys for hanging out with me, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.